Are you interested in selling personalized products in your Etsy print-on-demand shop using Printify? In this video, I'm going to walk through creating a personalized design, and then I'm also going to walk through creating the product listing on Etsy step-by-step. -step. There is a huge opportunity to sell personalized designs on print-on-demand products in the Etsy marketplace. There are pretty much no limits on what types of products or designs you can make when it comes to adding personalization or customization. And there are some general personalized type niches that are also very popular. And we're gonna use one of those examples to walk through creating a design and a listing. So I use the Sales Samurai Chrome extension to start my niche research like I always do, because for me, it doesn't start any different if I'm looking for a personalized design niche versus a regular one. Now, in general, one of the sort of popular family niches for designs for t-shirts or sweatshirts or hoodies are vacations or certain types of trips. So one that I came across was a ski trip or a ski vacation. So that type of terminology led me to pop open the Chrome extension for Sales Samurai and find a couple of ideas here. So I just searched for ski vacation shirt here to get an idea of what some of the competition is doing from a design standpoint and from a keyword standpoint. Uh, I'm seeing a common trend here of ski goggles as one of the central elements in a lot of these designs with, you know, family name or your name and then the year and ski trip. So I think mountains are, you know, pretty much synonymous with skiing, obviously. So I do want to incorporate mountains, but I don't think I want to do ski goggles because I see a lot of that and I want to kind of stand out and be a little different. Now I'm going to use Kittle to show you two different ways to create a personalized design. And these two different methods are exactly the same no matter what design software you use. So if you don't use Kittle, that's totally fine. You can use Photoshop, you can use Canva, you can use Photopia, whatever software you use to create your designs, the way you would approach this is the exact same. So we've got all of these design templates to pick from. But for example, here is something that I think is a good, possibly a good candidate. You can always change the color theme of these templates but it's already got the mountains in it, I could easily swap out that bird in the center for, you know, a silhouette of a skier and change the style of the text, change the color scheme, and I'd have a skiing design. And that's exactly what I did with this design here. This started out as just a design that had the mountains in it and the year across the back, and some of this text was across the top. So I really had to do minimal edits to this. I added this little silhouette of a skier there by using the uh, search for elements. So very simple edits. And like I said, this is not something that you need to have Kittle to do. You could very easily put something like this together in Photoshop or Canva. If you use software like Photoshop or Designer or Affinity or something like that, you'll just need to have a source for the actual graphics that you want to use. But there are plenty of sites out there like Creative Fabrica and Vexels and places like that if you don't use Canva or Kittle uh, because they have built-in elements that you can use. But this is method number one that I wanted to show you. So this is a fully integrated design. I'm kind of making up that term, but basically what I mean is I've included all of the text of this design in my actual print file here. I have everything, including the stuff that's going to be personalized here in my design editor, in my editing software. So what that means is that when I get an order, I will have to come back here or wherever, wherever you have your design. If it's Photoshop, you have to go back to Photoshop. If it's Canva, you have to go back to Canva. And I would have to personalize this text for each order and then export this print file again. So I'd have to come back in here and I grouped all of this so that I could move it around. So I'd have to come back in here, ungroup all of it, and then come back to my text and we'll edit the Smith family here. And then for Park City, it was Jackson Hole. All right, so there we go. That might not be exactly perfectly the way I want it, but you get the picture. That's basically what I would have to do if I got an order for Smith family, Jackson Hole, and then export this as a PNG again. And then on the Printify side of things, again, if we use that example of that order, what I would need to do is come to my My Products page in Printify. I need to find the Family Ski Trip Custom Shirt. Here's that design with my template on it, my Davis Family Park City sort of text template. And I would need to create a duplicate, a copy of this listing here, because this one would actually be the one that's published. So instead of editing this one, I would use the Duplicate button or the Copy button here, create a copy of it, and then I would go into the Design Editor. I would remove the the Davis family template print file, and I would upload the one that I just personalized. 
So there's our Smith family Jackson hole design, and I would have then need to make sure I resize the graphic to be exactly the same size and the same placement as what I show in my mockups on the original because I want it to come out looking exactly the same just with the personalization. And I've walked through the steps of how to actually do the order fulfillment part in a couple other videos that I'll link in the description if you ever want to reference back to them. But for now, I want to show you what the other method is of creating the design so that you only have to edit the text on Printify and don't have to go back and edit the original print file. All right, so your option two or method two for creating a design like this for this niche would be to create the design in a way that actually does not include any of the personalized text. Just create the base design with the base graphics in it or the elements that are not gonna change between each order. And so that might look something like this, where I don't have any of the text fields around it. I don't have any of that stuff that's gonna need to be customized. I just have that base graphic. We've got the mountains we've got that silhouette of a skier a couple little at star accents there and then the the bold text that's going to say ski trip uh, on every print file regardless of what the personalization is so this might look a little bit less fancy but it's because we are going to use printify's built-in text layers to add the personalized parts of the design and just one other quick note if there are any other individual elements that you want to use in the design but might need to move around when you're making your personalizations like this snowflake i still want to use a snowflake in between the family name and the city or the location so i just save this as a separate file and add it as a, a different layer so i can still move it around and so this is what that ends up looking like so i've uploaded my ski trip base graphic that's going to be the same no matter what on every one and then i have used printify's custom text layers to add the customization for the family name and the location and the year. Of course, you can size and move around the text layers as needed. And one other quick thing to point out is the text color. You want to match your text color to your design whenever possible, unless it makes sense for it to be plain white or plain black. And the easiest way to do that is to use the hex code option that Printify gives you here. They have a, a set of preset colors here, but to match your design, the easiest thing to do is use your design software so come back to your design and no matter what software you're using basically you just want to find the color options and use the eyedropper to select the color from the design that you want to use in your text so for example once i select my graphic here it's going to show me on the right side of the screen what all of the colors are that are currently present so let's say that i want to use this kind of gold yellow orangey color here from the design all i have to do if i'm in kittle is select my graphics it'll pop up the group settings menu if these things are grouped or it would just bring up the options for the one graphic if they weren't grouped but it will show you the colors that are currently present in that design so i'll select that color that i wanted and it will pop open the color selection and there's the hex code right there so all i need to do is copy that hex code come back over to printify and select the text layer select the text color and paste in the hex code for the color so why would you want to create your design this way with sort of the base graphic elements and then add your text in Printify? Well, there is one main benefit and one drawback. The main benefit is that anytime you get an order, instead of having to go back to your original print file, wherever that is, if it's Kittle, Canva, Photoshop, wherever, instead of having to go back to that print file and make your edits there, you only need to make edits here right in Printify and you have to come into Printify anyway to do this personalized order. So you really are keeping it all self-contained to just Printify. So in this case, it was Smith family and all we have to do now is just change the bottom text here. And there we go. We were able to make our adjustment for the personalization for our order in just a few quick clicks in Printify. Didn't have to edit the print file, didn't have to export it, didn't have to upload it and do all of that every single time. So personally, I like this option a lot lot using Printify's built-in text because I think it's a little bit more efficient to make the personalizations. However, I did mention there is one drawback. The drawback is that your text options are much more limited if you use the built-in text layers. And what I mean by options are two things. Number one, the fonts that you have to select. So the fonts, as you can kind of see here, I'll scroll through them quickly. It's, you know, a decent selection, but it's definitely not going to be anywhere near as big of a selection as you have in canva or kittle and then the other limitation is in the ability for you to transform the text there really is no ability at least currently on printify to do any transformations to the text to make it an arch so it's you know circular 
or make it wavy or anything like that. It's just going to be a straight, you know, horizontal text layer. So how do we actually create this listing on the Etsy side of things? And then what does an order look like when it comes in? Let's go through that part of the process now. So let's publish this one with the text layers in it to our Printify account. And before I even do this, there's one other quick thing to mention. Because I used Printify's text layers to finish this design, I don't actually have a PNG file with the full design in it. So if I want to create any of my own mockups or, you know, get mockups from Placid or another site like that, I'm going to need to get a PNG file of the finished design. Now, I do want to point out Printify does now currently have some more usable mockups than they've had in the past. For example, they now provide a flat mockup like this one that has a few other elements in it that looks a little bit better than their traditional one. And if you don't want to go to the trouble of recreating this whole finished design just to get a PNG file that you can use on Placeit or something like that, then what you could do is download the mockups that they provided like this one, upload them into Canva or your design editing software, get rid of the white background and replace it with something that looks a little nicer, like some wood or something like that. Just to give you an idea of kind of how quick and easy that is, when you're in the preview view, this is where the highest resolution images are in your Printify account. I wouldn't use the little pop-up from the thumbnails. I would come to the design editor and then go to the preview view. And then from here, in the very bottom left part of the screen, there is a download button. You can also just right click and do save image as, but if you just click on that button in the bottom left corner, it will download a JPEG of that mockup. So if we grab a couple of these, let's just take a look at how fast and easy it is to do this in Canva. All right, so I just created a new blank project that's 2000 by 2000 in Canva. And the first thing I did was came over to photos and searched for wood. Then you're gonna go to your uploads tab and you're gonna upload the mockups that you downloaded. We'll select that flat mockup first because that's the one we want the wood background for. And then I'm going to, you do need a Canva Pro to use the background remover in here. So if you don't have Canva Pro and it doesn't make sense for you to get Canva Pro, then I would just use your photo editing software like Photoshop or Photopia, which is free. And you can do this also very easily using that software. And you can get the wood backgrounds and things like that from sites like Pixabay or Pexels free for commercial use as long as you're not reselling the graphics, which we're not. These are just mock-ups. And there we go. Much better looking mock-up with that wood in the background versus the plain white background. And then we'll add a page here and we'll do another one for one of the mock-ups of a person wearing it. So we're going to go back to photos and search for a background that we can use for that. So for this one, you might have to search around a little bit to find one that really makes sense for the image that you have. So we'll do the same thing with the other mock-up image that we downloaded here. And one thing that you also might wanna do is consider putting two people together in the same one because this is a family themed design. So if, if you have you know downloaded a couple of these, so consider having one mock-up where you pull a couple people together and place them next to each other. So it's got kind of that effect of, you know, it's a family who is wearing these shirts together. And once you're done with that, just download those as J peg files and you're good to go. All right, now back to our Printify listing. We can go ahead and edit our details here, publish it to Etsy, and then finish our edits on the Etsy side of things. So first is going to be our title. Here's where you want to have the best matching keywords, keyword phrases that are the most appropriate fit for the, the design, the niche, and the product. And this is where, you know, that checking we did on our competition helped to give us some ideas, right? We saw some people using phrases like custom family vacation sweatshirt, custom snow ski trip, ski vacation shirts, family vacation t-shirt, family ski trip shirt. So how do you know which one of those is the best to use? Well, basically what you're going to want to do is use your research tool to check those phrases and see what type of Etsy search volume there is. And the one that you feel is the best combination of search volume and matching to what your product is in your design, that's the one you want to be first in your title. And Sales Samurai is one of those tools. There are many out there. I like Sales Samurai because I love the Chrome extension and I like the other resources that are here in the actual site in their keyword search. And I think it's good value for the price because with the coupon code that I have available, POD Insights, all lowercase, that'll get you 20% off. And if you pay annually, that's $79 per year. And that's one of the best values out there that I am personally aware of. There 
there are a lot of other tools, a lot of which cost more to give you either the same or less value. In my opinion, that is just my opinion, but you should use whatever tool you think gives you the best value. E-Rank is a tool that I've used in the past. They have a free, totally free account. I absolutely think you should sign up for the free E-Rank account just to try it out. So to make it a little bit easier to identify what we want in the beginning of our title, I just came to the, the sort of native, the keyword search tool that's in the Sales Samurai site now, and I put in ski trip shirt as a starting point. And it's telling us we have about 900 competing listings for this particular search phrase. But the most helpful information is gonna actually be a little bit further down on the page here. We have suggestions and tags. Now this is a list of related keyword phrases with the Etsy search volume. And then we also to the right of that have tags, which are actual tags that listings within these search results are using, how many listings are using those tags, and then what the Etsy search volume is for those. Now, another thing that we can do right on this same page is keep scrolling down and we will actually see the Etsy listings that match the original search that we ran, which was just for ski trip shirt. So for example, this very first one here, this is not a personalizable. This is just like a set of ski goggles with some mountains in it, but this one does have the most views and the most likes. So if we go to the details area and click on this little eye symbol, it's going to actually open a page with all of the details from this listing on it, including all of the tags that this listing is is using. So if we take a look at the tags they're using, this is another way that we can get some ideas for potential phrases we might want in our title and our tags. All right, so putting all of that together and what do we think the first sentence in our title is going to be? I am gonna go with family ski vacation shirt because I think I've seen the word family in the sum of them. I also know that ski vacation shirt is one of the higher search volume, at least as far as Sales Samurai is concerned. I also want ski trip to be in here somewhere because that was the second highest current search volume that we saw. And for this one, I'm gonna use ski trip shirts. Now, generally speaking, it is entirely not necessary for you to use the name of the product, the word shirt in here like 10 times. You don't have to have the word shirt after every sentence. There are some phrases that you just, you want those words strung together exactly, even though Etsy uses the type of product based on the category combines that with the keywords that people search for. So even if I only had ski trip in here and not the word shirts, it should match up, but that just looks weird. Like to a person reading it, just seeing the words ski trip is kind of strange. So when it makes sense, I still include the word of the product more than once, but don't stuff that in there a thousand times. It's just not necessary for every single thing to end with shirt or shirts. And then I'm just gonna put family skiing vacation as the third phrase in here. I generally don't go more than three phrases. I don't generally do the thing where you see like 10 sentences all broken up as part of a title. Now, as far as description goes, you do want to have a few keywords there, especially at the beginning of your description uh, that are included in your title and your tags. Etsy does use description in search matching for keywords now, but, but I don't believe it carries the same weight as your title and your tags. So it's not overly critical. Include anything relevant about the product as well as I like to refer people to the size charts, and I actually have a template for this that I've saved separately in my notes app, and I just paste it in there every time. All right, our pricing. Now, this is something that if you list a lot of the same product, like if, if I used this particular t-shirt with this particular print provider, what I like to do is actually just copy the last one that I made. And that carries all your pricing and your description presets and all that forward so that you don't necessarily have to play around with it a lot. But this one I did create brand new from the catalog. So I do need to set my pricing on this. One thing that's important to note is that personalized products generally can command a higher price point. So if you're selling personalized products, just like you would for any other niche, do your competition research first, if, especially if it's the first few you know designs you're creating that are personalized, because you don't want to price yourself out of the market by charging an exorbitantly high price compared to the competition. But generally speaking, personalized designs, personalized products, do command a slightly higher price than a non-personalized product. So for example, if you charge $19.99 for non-personalized t-shirts, you should be able to get away with $23, $24.99 for a personalized t-shirt, possibly higher depending on which t-shirt it is you're using and what the competition is doing. So it's always worth a check. All right, now if you're not quite ready to publish it and have it live in your Etsy shop, you can use the hide in store option here. That will push it as a draft to your Etsy account. Uh, I'm gonna have my mockups and everything ready, so I will go ahead and leave that unchecked. Variant visibility here, I'm going to 
show all variants available, even if they are out of stock with the provider that I created this listing with. That is because I personally, when it's something like t-shirts where there's just, there's a lot of print providers out there on Printify for the same product. If I get an order for something that's out of stock, I just go and switch that one individual order over to somebody that has it that I trust until it's back in stock with my normal provider. One important thing at the bottom of your edit page on your listing, this is true no matter what type of product you're publishing, is don't create a new shipping profile unless you actually need to. By default, Printify checks this box and creates a brand new shipping profile for every single product that you publish. And this is a t-shirt that I want to have the exact same shipping profile that all my other t-shirts have. So I'm gonna uncheck this box and use the drop down here to select the shipping profile that I actually want to use. And that is my t-shirts profile that I named specifically so I could find it easily when I do this. And now you can hit the publish button that is behind my head. All right, so once that listing comes over and actually is published in your Etsy account, now it's time to make your final edits and, and turn on the personalization option in the listing. So first things first, it's gonna come over with some, but not all of the mockups, depending on how many are there in Printify and how many color options you chose. Etsy only allows you to have you know 10 mockup photos and you can see how many of them came over with the navy color that took up the majority, but we're not gonna use these. We also need a size chart in here, so we'll delete all the other ones, we'll use the ones that we made in Canva. All right, now we've got our mockups from Canva loaded up here. So we've got a good number of mockups and you're gonna wanna, of course, adjust your thumbnail, your primary thumbnail. I would even like to zoom in a little bit farther than that, but something like that, it's still clear, you know, what you're looking at. The design's a little bit bigger, stands out. I also recommend including an image of a size chart. I like to have a nice kind of more professional looking one than just the one that Printify provides. You can just do a screenshot of the one on the Printify's catalog page, but I think having a nice, more professional looking one is always a good thing. And you can make these very easily using Canva or other design software as well. I actually have a video about how to make size charts that you can reuse for all your listings. Put a link to that in the corner and in the description if you want to check it out. All right, now for our listing information, always got to make sure we change the about this listing section to indicate another company makes this product, not me. One other thing I like to do for t-shirts is notice how this comes through as t-shirts and then there are all these subcategories to it. If you come in here and just delete the S, it'll pop up you know, the options for categories and you can actually go one layer deeper in t-shirts. You can go with graphic tees. So that's the same parent categories. It's, it's still in the clothing category. It's still under t-shirts, but it goes one layer deeper to graphic tees, which is what this is. So I like to select that. All right, now any of the attributes that don't apply, you don't have to select anything for. I do usually choose the sleeve length as well as the neckline. So we'll go with short sleeve and crew neck. Now under graphic, when you select graphic t-shirt, you get the option to select select what the subject of the graphic is. And for a graphic, a design like this, you actually have a few options here. It's not super critical. We have sports and fitness. You know, we have skiing. We have a sport in the design, so we could select sports and fitness. Uh, but we also have a travel and transportation. I'm probably going to go with travel here because the theme of this graphic is is a trip, a vacation. So I'll go with travel for this one. Now, renewal options. I have a whole video about why I select manual, not automatic, because the renewal option here has nothing to do with renewing your listing after it sells. What actually controls the automatic relisting of this product when it does sell is the quantity that you set down in your product variant section, not the renewal options. So our description here, you can edit it if you need to, but if you set it all up in Printify, you shouldn't have anything to edit here. I just didn't make the edits in Printify before I published it. So if, if that's the case, then you would want to edit this here. Of course, you need to select your production partner like you always do. Now we come to our tag section. So this is where we're gonna start using all of those phrases that we found either in the Sales Samurai Chrome extension, in the suggestions, in the tags, or in some of those competing listings where we got some ideas. All right, so I was able to fill out all 13 tags here, and yes, there are a couple that are a little bit less likely to show up in search results than others, but basically what I'm going for here is I wanna match at least part of a phrase. I want to string together something that will at least match part of a search phrase, if nothing else, and it's still relevant for my design and my product. Now, I was able to find a few more on some of the other competition lists 
listings like group ski trip, skiing family, family trip shirts. We got Apre ski shirt in there. But there you go. You definitely want to fill up all 13 tags whenever possible because that is just cross-referencing you across a lot more potential search results. Now in your variations or your variant section, there shouldn't be anything that you need to do for this type of listing unless, like me, you forgot to get rid of the size 4X and 5X and you don't want to offer that. If you do that, come to the edit variations and just find the 4X and 5X and just get rid of them. Then click on update, it'll remove 4X and 5X and now you're good to go. Now, here is the most important part of this whole deal. We finally came to it, the personalization option. By default, it is turned off, so hit the toggle switch here and turn it on. Now, there's only two things that you need to do here. Number one is to put instructions for your customer, which by the way, it also is probably a good idea to put the exact same instructions in the description because you never know which thing the customer is going to read or not read. So I would put the same instructions in your description as well. So here it gives you on the left a space to enter your instructions. You do have a limit of only 256 characters here. So if you need to expand on these instructions, definitely do that in the description. So here's a sample of what I would say for this specific product in this design. Enter the name, location, and year that you would like in the design. See sample photos for text placement. Please message us before ordering if you have any questions. And the second thing you have to do is indicate whether personalization is optional with this checkbox here. And this depends on your design. You will have some designs that you could create where you don't necessarily need the personalization. It looks fine without it. But in this case, this one requires personalization. It just wouldn't look right without it. So for this one, I'm going to leave that unchecked, which means they have to enter something in that personalization field before they add it to their cart. And then one extra thing here to do is you can put a character limit there if you want to. For example, if we had one that really we only had space for like six characters, it was just going to be a name or a year or something, you can limit it so they can't put more than that in the personalization. For this one, it's not like we have unlimited space, but we also have a decent amount of room. So you don't want to limit this to like 10 characters because then they can't tell you everything. You can maybe reduce it down from 256 to like 100 or something like that, just so they can't write you a novel in there. All right, we've got our shipping profile selected here. Shouldn't have to change that as long as you selected the existing one on Printify before you published it. Now, recently Etsy did change their returns and exchanges structure the way they work. So if you have one set for your whole store, you still are going to have to click on apply here at the bottom of any new listing to apply the existing returns policy uh, that you have for your shop to this one listing. Or you can create a new policy that's specific to this one listing. But for this one, I don't take returns or exchanges. That's the policy for my whole shop. So I'm just going to select apply and keep it the same. And now we are ready to publish. So we can go ahead and publish this and it will be live and good to go. All right. So here's our listing on our shop page. And like I mentioned, earlier with this thumbnail, I could even, I think I need to zoom in further on this because in my opinion, this Smith family Jackson Hole 2022, seeing the customization, I don't think that's big enough. But if we just take a look at the listing here, here we go. Here's our mock-ups that we included, that we made on Canva, as well as our size chart, of course, that we have in here. Now, what it looks like for the customer when they go to purchase on the right side of the listing, I think this is below the mock-ups if you're on like a mobile device on your phone. You have your color selection and your size selection, just like you always always do. So we select the color and the size. And then right below that, you've got the required field to add your personalization. And it's a pretty small box, but this is where they need to follow the instructions that we put right here to enter the name, the location, and the year that they want. And when you actually receive a personalized order, you will see the personalization required right here. Now you're looking at an order that I canceled because I placed this order myself as a sample for a different video that I made. Um, so you would not see it as canceled. It would be on your new orders tab. But just for the purpose of showing you the example, right underneath the SKU number for this product, you see the personalization that was entered that was requested by the customer. In this case, they asked for John, the name, and this was a Christmas ornament product that I created. So they're looking for that name to be added to the ornament. Now on the Printify side of things, when it comes to fulfilling your personalized orders, you have two choices for how you set these up and actually go through the order fulfillment process. And I discussed those two options in a video that I just made. So I'm not going to go all the way through it here. It'll just make this video even longer than it already is. But basically your two options are to have all of your orders set to manual order submission, meaning every order that comes into Printify has to be manually submitted. The other option involves changing or deleting the SKU numbers for all of the product variants in your listing so they don't sync to your Printify account. And you then use your other orders tab on Printify to manually import the orders for your personalized products and then all of your other orders can still sync to your account 
and go automatically to production. So you have those two options on the order fulfillment side of things. And if you want to see that, an example of that, then check out the video that I linked to in the corner and in the description about fulfillment for personalized or custom orders. All right, if you're still watching at this point, thank you for sticking around. I hope you found some helpful information in this video about creating a product that is personalized from start to finish. Let me know in the comments if you have any tips for personalized product creation or order fulfillment or any part of this process in the comments because we can all benefit by sharing information with each other. And if you did find this video helpful, do me a favor and hit that like button so YouTube can show the video to more people and subscribe to the POD Insights channel if you haven't already. The channel just recently hit over 6,000 subscribers. So thank you so much for all the support and all of the engagement. I really do appreciate it. Thanks everybody. See you next time.